Let's talk about pricing. Just like with everything in SaaS, this is something that you always want to test and iterate on, to improve on. But if you get it right the first time, then it's going to be a huge differentiator between making it or just not having enough funds to keep growing, especially if you are bootstrapping your SaaS. This video is a part of a series that we're doing talking about SaaS pricing plans, how to price your SaaS. The goal is for you at the end of this series to be able to answer the question, how should I price my SaaS in a way that fits your own specific use case and product. So let's get going. This video is going to be all about free plans, free tiers. Should you offer a free plan in your SaaS pricing plan or not? That is the question. And if you do, What's the right way to do it? By the end of this video, you will hopefully have the answers to these questions. The arguments for and against a free plan are pretty clear. The argument for is that it helps you acquire new customers, traffic, and just general eyeballs on your product, feedback from customers, especially when you don't have the resources or the reputation to really acquire customers who are willing to pay for you. And these free customers can potentially become paid ones in the future. The arguments against it are that these are basically freeloaders on your platform. They don't actually generate any revenue. They just sit on your servers and your database and make you pay more for your infrastructure. And we don't like that. Who likes that? No one right? There is another argument that says that having a free plan in your pricing structure positions you lower, makes your product seem cheaper, not as high quality, etc. I don't really subscribe to that belief, but we'll talk about it more later in the video. And then the worst one is that let's say you have all of these free customers, you later have to chase them to convince them to upgrade to a paid plan and become paid customers who wants to do that you don't want to create a problem for yourself down the line where you have to chase them and get them to pay for your product that's not great so taking these pros and cons into account, in which cases should you have a free plan? Why would you want to do that? First, let's say you are building a micro SaaS. You are going to be launching on a platform. And if you are a follower of this channel, there's a high chance that you are, because that's a lot of what we talk about, building a Shopify app or any kind of other micro SaaS. When you launch on a marketplace, this marketplace has its own algorithm. It takes into account the traffic that you get, the reviews, the Instagram, stores, etc. And it helps you rank higher or lower in the search results. So the more customers you get, doesn't matter if they're free or not, the higher you will show up in the search results and the more eyeballs you will get on your product. And that means that in this case, these free customers, they are not freeloaders. They are your first reviewers. They are your first signals to the platform that, hey, this is a good product to look out for because they are so much easier to acquire than paid one, naturally. The second case is when you are not paying per customer usage. And this is really important, especially in the beginning. If there is a direct correlation between customer actions to how much you pay for your infrastructure, then you probably shouldn't offer them a free option. You could offer them a usage option, but not a completely free one. For example, let's say I send SMS messages on behalf of my customers. Well, each message costs me money. So at the very least, I have to charge them the cost of this message or I can create a problem for myself where I'm losing money instead of making it. We never want to create that kind of problem for ourselves. But if there is no direct correlation like a paid API or something like that between your customer's usage and your payment, then you can afford to offer them a free plan without really swallowing too many losses here. The third reason is that you have customers from all types, sizes, and shapes. Just like we want our clothing brands to be size inclusive, I think our SaaS brands should be as well. And a free plan is inclusive. A free plan allows you to catch the customers when they're still small, when they're just getting started, offer them something for free and allow them to grow with you. When they are bigger and they need more from your product, they'll also be more able to pay you. So they grow with you. And if you do it right, you might become an integral part of their business or their lives. And that is a really good way to capture these kind of customers who are going to in the future grow. Now, might they not grow and 
just eventually churn, yeah, that could happen. But for the ones who do, it's a lot of the times worth it to allow them to start with you and not start with a competitor. And the last reason would be if your features are still very minimal. So you might have all of these amazing plans for what your SaaS is going to have, all of these amazing features that you're going to charge for. Maybe you still have a very limited set of features, maybe even one feature. In this case, it's worth it to say, okay, hey, get the app for free for now, but soon I'm gonna be adding more features and you're gonna have to start paying. An example, that's something we did pretty recently. We recently launched reconvert on Wix. Yay, yada yada. And we launched a very minimal version of the app. It doesn't have all the features that we have on Shopify because we're slowly gonna add them on. And we launched it with the promise of slowly adding on more features. With that in mind, we offer the app completely for free for a select few beta customers who are bigger customers with the full understanding that once we launch this one feature that they all ask for and they all need, they're gonna start paying us. We also communicated the pricing plans early on. It's on our website, on the app store, so they know how much it's going to be. And they know that this is limited in time until we release one specific feature, not until we have everything that we already do in Shopify. This is a very specific case where allowing for a free plan for the bigger customers actually is a really good way to make sure that they go with you and not a competitor or, you know, they're willing to wait patiently until they have some of the things that they need that are currently missing. Okay, so let's say you decided to go and create a free plan, a free tier in your pricing structure. How do you do it? How should you do it? And what's the right way to do it and yes there is a right and a wrong way to do a free plan doing a free plan right is not that difficult but there is one thing that is the most important tool when it comes to free plans that people seem to be consistently falling for that seems to be getting people every time when they price their products the rule is that the customer doesn't get to decide when they upgrade from the free plan you get to decide that it is up to you and not them when they are going to switch from free to paid. Because if it is up to them, then you're gonna continue chasing them forever and ever and trying to convince them to upgrade. There are two main ways to do that. One is usage-based pricing. And we do have a video talking about usage-based pricing. I already mentioned it's one of my personal favorite ways to price any kind of SaaS. So go ahead and watch that. If you want to, I'm gonna talk about how to incorporate a free plan in your usage-based more in depth there. But in a nutshell, what you want to do is just have a free tier in your usage base. So it's not a separate plan. It's part of your usage base plan. If they use your product up to a certain point, then it's free. The moment they exceed that point, they're going to start paying. Simple as that. Example, again, from reconvert. We used to have a free plan for a while where customers would not pay if they had less than 50 orders a month. The moment they had more, the moment they had 51, they started paying. Simple as that. The important thing here is that you don't want to limit the features of the app or what they can do with it the moment they exceed the free plan. What you want to happen is that they are automatically transferred into the next tier, not the app stops working and then they actively have to switch to a new tier. No, it should be completely dynamic and once they switch, they should be in the next paying tier. This way, it's really flexible for both you and the customer. If a certain month they are below the free tier, then they're not going to pay. They're going to get the app for free that month. If they are above it, then they are going to pay and you don't have to chase them to do it. Of course, I hope it goes without saying, but I will say it anyway. It is really important to be transparent with your pricing in these cases. The customers don't need to be surprised. Some of them, of course, will be because sometimes we just don't pay attention that's us people but you want to do your best and everything that you can do to make sure that they understand exactly how the pricing work and they're not surprised at the end of the month the next way to do it is with limiting features if you are going for features based pricing then you can offer a free tier that is very limited in features and allows the customers to you know use the app and once they need a little bit more they have to upgrade you don't want to be too stingy here because you don't want to give them like a preview of the app. They need to have at least one or two useful features that they can use in the free plan, but have a lot of these bait features in the next plan. And in our video about features-based pricing, I talked about how to create these kind of bait features that bait people into upgrading to the next plan. This may take some trial and error, but I think eventually if you try, you will find a way to get people into these paid plans, but also offer the free plan for the people who need it and 
and want it so that you can have them as customers and they will start paying when they are ready to start paying. A really good example here is Canva. Canva are completely free for a lot of people, but the moment you need something a little more advanced, you have to upgrade and you will upgrade. If you are a designer, if you're a business owner, anything like that, you're gonna upgrade to get things like resize, like brand colors and all of the premium assets. You get all of them in the paid plan. And it's a very easy yes in Canva. Like it's really useful. The free plan is super useful. You can do a lot, but they, I feel like have their customer profiles honed in correctly because they manage to create the plans in a way that if you are the kind of customer that they aim to become paying customer, you will become paying customer really easily. And then the rest of you who want to use it for free, you'll use it for free and generate a whole lot of attention to them, talk about them, help them acquire the paid customers as well. So I think it's a really good example and interesting example to look at here. Taking all of that into account, do you think you'll do a free plan in your SaaS? Or, you know, if you already have one, do you have a free plan? Why or why not? I would love to know because I remember when I first got started, it was a huge discussion of should we offer a free plan or not? And I know some people still disagree with that. Me personally, I think that free plans are really powerful, especially when you get started. And I would, in more cases than not, probably add a free plan to any product that I create that I launch for the first time. I think it can be really helpful and it helps more than it damages in most cases. But again, I would love to hear your opinion. So let me know in the comments. And if you haven't yet, don't forget to subscribe and like this video. And we are nearing the end of this series about pricing. The last one is going to come out soon and it's going to talk all about the ideal way, in my opinion, to price your SaaS. And yeah, I know I keep saying that I love usage-based pricing and I do, but I don't think it's necessarily the ideal way in every case. So I'll see you in the next video. Have a great day.